this is the second video on recursion and in this lecture we'll look at applying recursion to search a binary tree. In particular we'll be using the depth first search as our example. Before we begin here are a few questions that you should be able to answer before we start on this video. Just take a moment to go through each of them and make sure you can answer them. So recursion is typified by its production of structures that are self-similar. That means that at different scales, these structures exhibit statistically similar properties. And we'll look at how we use this property of self-similarity to solve problems, in particular, how to search a tree. We'll start with a binary tree. And this is, as it says, a line recursively branched. We start with the trunk of the tree, and in the case of a binary tree, we subdivide it into two. Each of these, in turn, we subdivide into two, and each of these into two until we've gone from the trunk of the tree right down to the smallest twigs. When we're talking about data structures in computer science, we usually draw the tree in this way looks upside down, where we have the root at the top and the leaves at the bottom. We can think about a lot of structures, for instance in a game world, as trees. Here we've got an illustration of a cave, and we can see the entry at the top that forms the root of the tree, and scattered throughout the cave system, or the tree if you prefer, we've got different things, for instance gold in the bottom right hand corner, or a bat in one of the nodes. So the tree is then made up of these nodes connected by parts. And if we're going to search through this cave system or the tree exhaustively, completely, so that we visit each node, then we must move from one node to the next along the paths that connect them. Here's the same tree. In this case I've labelled the root at the top of the tree and the leaf nodes, these are the nodes at the bottom that have no further subtrees branching out from them. Now this whole thing is a binary tree. It's binary because each node has at most two paths leading from it. If we're going to think about recursion in this sense, then we also need to consider that any subpart of the tree is also a binary tree. So if we just look at the left branch from the root, we see here a tree, in fact a binary tree. And from here we can also look at the left branch and we've got another binary tree. And from here we can look at the left branch again and even this little leaf node at the bottom is a binary tree. In this case though, it's a bit degenerate, it has no children. So we're going to use this property of the binary tree, that is that its subtrees are also binary trees, in order to search the tree using a recursive algorithm. So our aim will be to start and finish at the root, at the top of the page, and to move down the tree. So we begin here at the start. Now from here, we're going to search this tree one node at a time following the connecting paths. And we're going to, in this case, move first along the leftmost path from the root to the next node, and we're going to visit it. Now, from here, we have, again, two choices. <clears throat> we could take the left path or the right path. We're going to take the left path. From here, we only have one choice. We'll take the left path. And we find ourselves now at the leaf node. And from here, there are no more paths. So what do we do? We return back to the previous location in the tree. From here, we find that we have now explored the only path, that was the left path, so we must return again to the previous node. And in this case, we find that there was an unexplored path, that is, the one to the right. So our next step is to explore this rightmost path. And we do this and we find ourselves once again at a leaf node. From here, because there are no left or right paths, again, we return to the previous location, and we find now at this location that we've explored both the left and the right paths, so it's time to return to the root. Now we've explored the entire left subtree of the root, 
we can actually start to explore its right subtree. So we do this, and we find ourselves at this node which has no left path. So we don't need to explore that, but we do need to explore the right path from this node. Again, we do this and we find ourselves at a leaf with no further nodes to explore. So we return to the previous node, which has now had all of its paths explored. And we now return to the root and we find, amazing, we've actually searched its left and right subtrees. Therefore, we've finished the problem and we've looked in every node on the tree. We've searched it in its entirety. So here's a, an illustration of the order in which we visited the nodes. We started at the root, at the top of the tree here. We then went down two, three, four, and then we went back up, returning up the tree until we found an unexplored node. And we found five. This was the fifth node we found. We then go back, back, down to six, down to seven, and then back and out. Now in this case you can see that we actually went deep first. That is, when we were looking at node one, the root node, we went two, three, four, we went as far down the tree as we could to the left before returning up the tree and then going as far down as we could again to find five and back up and so on and then as far down this way. An alternative would have been, for instance, to start at node one, then to go to node two, then to go back up to here and then down here. That's a different way of searching the tree. What we did is go deep first, therefore we were conducting what's called a depth first search. So let's look now at our algorithm. We have here a little representation of the tree in the top corner. And our algorithm was, if the current place has unexplored paths leading deeper, then take the less leftmost unexplored path. So from here, we're left with a new subtree. If there are no deeper paths from a location where we currently find ourselves, then we just return to the last place with unexplored paths. And again, we take the leftmost unexplored path. So that's the entire algorithm that we followed in order to search the tree. We can write the algorithm like this as a function for conducting a depth first search. The parameter to the depth first search is tree. Now recall that any subsection of the tree is also a tree. <clears throat> so to conduct our search, if the tree at its current location had a left path, then we just call depth first search again on the left path. That is, we're simplifying the problem by looking at the left path subtree. If the tree has a right path, then we also want to call depth first search on the right path and simplify the problem in that way. So we've now broken up the tree into its left and right halves, if you like, or subtrees, and we're going to search each of these in exactly the same way as we search the entire tree. That is by recursively calling depth first search on their left and right paths where they exist. When we get to a leaf node, such as say node four, five or seven in the illustration, then we return. This is the termination condition. There are no paths left to search from the leaf node, so all we can do is return. And when we return, of course, if we've looked in the left path and the right path where they existed, then we've finished searching this node. We then now return back up the calling stack until we're left at another location that has unexplored paths. So here we'll step through the algorithm using a different illustration. We start by calling depth first search with our tree. And the arrow at the top of the page indicates the current location we're looking at in the tree. Now, if the tree has a left path, then we're going to call depth first search on the left path. In this case, it does. So we now call depth first search with a tree that was the left path from the previous node. But in this case, we've got a smaller part of the problem to solve. That is, we're now looking at the left subtree of the root node. Now, if this tree or subtree has a left path, then again, we call depth first search on the left path. It does. So we're now left looking at the subtree from the arrow. Again, we call depth first search. This time, again, we have a left path. So we call depth first search on this location. Now this location has no left path. 
we then ask if the tree has a right path, we would call depth first search, but it has no right path either. In actual fact, this is a leaf node. So what we can do here is return. We've visited this node and we've finished searching its subtrees. So we return to the previous location. In this case, we've now looked at the left path, but there is no right path. So what do we do? We skip the if tree has right path branch and we return. We've now visited this node as well. From here, we've visited the left subtree of the current node, but we haven't done the right. So we need to search the right. From here, there is no left path and there is no right path either. Therefore, we have visited this node and we return. Again, we've now visited the left and right subpaths from or subtrees from this node. So this node is finished with and we return to the root. We've now visited its left subtree in its entirety and we do exactly the same for the right tree. We've returned from the left tree calls and we now are looking at the right subtree of the root node. That is where executing this bit of code down here. Now this one had no left node, so we can't call the depth first search on its left path. Uh, this therefore means we call depth first search on the right path and we find we're at a leaf node. Therefore we've finished with this, we return. We've now looked at the left, which was non-existent, and the right path from this node. So we've select we've finished with this node and we return again. And that's it. We've now visited every node in the tree. Here's another way of thinking about this problem. So we recall that the whole thing is a binary tree. That is, the problem is now to search this entire tree. But what we want to do is break the problem up into sub-problems using our recursive calls. So we first look at the left subtree of the root node. That is the subtree starting with its own subroot, if you like, at node illustrated as two. From here we look at two's left subtree which has a root of three. From here we look at three's left subtree which has a root of four. Now this subtree has no further components therefore we've finished looking at this node four. We've also finished looking at all the nodes in this box and all the nodes two, three, four and five in this box. That means we've finished the left subtree of node 1 and it's now time to explore the right subtree of node 1. Whoop, I've missed something there. I'm sure you spotted that if you were quick. We hadn't actually explored all the nodes 2, 3, 4 and 5 so we do. We need to explore the rightmost node of 2. Now we've finished 2, 3, 4 and 5 and it's time to look at the right subtree of node 1. Here we find two nodes, six and seven. Six is the root of the subtree on the right of one. Seven is the root of the only subtree from six. And once we've explored seven, we've explored the subtree of six. Once we've explored six and seven, we've explored the right subtree of one. And therefore we've actually explored the entire tree. So that's how we solve tree search recursively. Recursion helps because we repeatedly applied the same procedure, that is the search of subtrees, to the problem. And we keep on simplifying the problem by calling depth first search on subtrees of subtrees of subtrees until the problem is so simple that we can solve it easily. That is, we're looking only at a single node with no further paths to search. And that's the end of this lecture on recursion.